Thank you all for actually attending uh, my talk. I am going to talk uh, about Open Daylight's uh, upcoming distribution, uh, Alien, which uh, we'll try to go over a sneak peek on how it is going to be delivered um, and why. And also, I want to make it a bit interactive, both from a hands-on perspective uh, and also from a community feedback perspective. So I, I hope that we can also uh, learn from you uh, and, and try to find out how you guys see, uh, how do you want to consume uh, Open Daylight. So basically uh, the title of the talk is Open Daylight's Apache Graph Based Distribution. That kind of started as a, a side project um, within the Open Daylight uh, control uh, in it project itself, where we wanted to remove or decouple the container from the actual project itself. Uh, for those of you uh, who, have, who used uh, hydrogen before, who, who's familiar with hydrogen in the room? Okay. Who, uh, who's familiar with Open Daylight? Right, that's good. I, mean, I was just checking because uh, I would have first introduced a bit what Open Daylight is about if half of the room would not know what I'm talking about. So uh, to get back to uh, what I was saying is that hydrogen it was the controller, or not only the controller, but the controller, the components, everything, uh, along with the container itself at the same time. So as part of the distribution, you would get a custom tailored version of the container that was bundled with, uh, with the project. So a lot of people have put a lot of work into making that piece work. But um, as we'll find out, sometimes it's better off to reuse stuff. Um, so today I'll go over really a, a three-part journey. So I'll, I'll talk a bit about the problems and, and solution. Um, then I, I'm going to go over a small user's hands-on demo, or, or basically just uh, how to get started into uh, installing the features, maybe gathering some of your user feedback. And part three, if we get some time for that, uh, I'll dig down into more uh, when you actually develop with that sort of container. What do you do? How do you do it? How do you bring the bundles in? And, and what can you do with uh, what cool shell commands do you have, right? So um, for those of you that are a little less developer inclined for that last piece, uh, you might find it a little more uh, heavy, but don't worry, uh, I'm not sure we get there. <laughs> so um, for hydrogen, just a small retrospective, and sorry for being in the front of the slides. Uh, so basically what we had, we had 14 projects. So it wasn't too bad, and the community was pretty good at handling that. So what they, what they did is try to think, how can you consume open their life? And what, what makes sense out of these 14 projects? How can you bundle that in units that make a sort of sense? So they basically came up with, and it's also what you have uh, in front of you uh, on the chair, with the architecture and the notion of the editions, right? So for those of you that have been familiar with the hydrogen release, uh, we had these editions. And as part of these editions, you would have, uh, the first one would be base edition. So what would base edition be? It would be a couple of southbounds, just enough to actually get the controller going. Uh, you'd have the network service functions, the abstraction layer, along with uh, only like the base functionalities like OpenFlow plugin and, and ways to talk with the actual devices. So that was your typical base edition. Then you'd have the virtualization edition. Virtualization, virtualization edition was actually bringing in uh, other network virtualization technologies uh, that usually uh, tried to own the old world, the whole world, right? So these um, these components, most of the time, will be standalone components. So it's really using the controller in a specific 
uh, use case. In this case, the network virtualization use case. Uh, that actually had in it uh, the VTN, uh, Affinity, OVSDB. So VTN, OVSDB, and, uh, uh, and OpenDAV uh, were all network virtualization uh, technologies that were doing similar goals and as such were part of the virtualization edition. Then for more the service provider in point, we have the service provider edition. Uh, that added a bunch of network service provider stuff like BGP or uh, PISA, BGP PISA, uh, LISP, um, SNMP, you know it, Defense for All. So it really was adding the more service provider oriented features as part of that edition. So it would actually be ready to run from the box. The thing is, and that where things got a little bit messier was Helium. So Helium, 25 projects proposal. We have twice as many. How do you actually categorize all that, right? How do you actually make this all um, into release edition? Well, before we actually got crazy within the project, um, we started to investigate how we could actually address that issue because it's, it is not a trivial thing uh, and with all the experience in working with the community and the people with hydrogen, while well, everyone was coming and saying, well, I like this, this and that component, but I would like to add that as well as part of uh, of my custom flavor. So it, it was always the the edition that didn't exist, right? So I, um, and so what we've actually been contemplating um, for uh, for helium is, and, and I'll talk more about that. That's where Karaf comes in, right? What's Karaf? Which is Apache Karaf? Is everyone in the room familiar with it? Who's heard heard of it? All right. So, as I was mentioning earlier, that current controller is really a mix and match of runtimes. And, and by mix and match, it's a little bit of stuff there from Apache, a little bit of stuff there from Eclipse, uh, and a bunch of versioning issues. Um, so. Not to blame or not to actually uh, point fingers here, but it, it was not easy to do. It's, it's not a trivial thing to assemble because you need to actually go and have the, um, know exactly all, all the libraries that were involved. And for hydrogen, there, was, there were 255 bundles. So that means 255 third party and open daylight libraries all together in a big, huge lump, <laughs> right? So that's what we had. Um, and that mix and match went only so far, it wasn't too bad, but um, we said there must be something better out there. there. There must be a way that we can reuse what the community did, because we're not the only ones that, um, that have been doing that over the, the, year, the years, right? So, if you're familiar with Fuse or Service Mix, well, Service Mix and Fuse had the same issue. They were they developed their uh, uh, container initially, uh, and what happened is they kind of spun it off as its own project. And that project is Carafe. Uh, Carafe in French, Carafe is actually a wine. Well, you know what a Carafe is, right? So. Uh, it's a container. So it's a wine container, that's where the name comes from, and that's how they kind of named it. Uh, so it is the container in which uh, your application will, will run, or applications, and in this case, it is the container in which pieces of the Open Daylight Runtime will run. So is it perfect? No, but it, at least it's a lot better than what we had before, and it's a good start <coughs> in order to improve uh, from now on. So what's actually, what's CAF actually bringing to the table? Well, 
first of all, and we'll see that in the more hands-on section, uh, we have a nicer console. So you do get a nicer shell CLI that you can have fun scripting, especially if you're more assistant than type of people. Um, then you have the logging part. So we have proper logging, proper uh, easier ways to handle all, all the, uh, the logs in a more centralized place, be able to retrieve them and so on and so forth. Then you have the deployer. The deployer is just a place where if you want to make an, a, a, your own custom extension, well, you can just package the whole thing as a plugin if you want and just dump that into the deploy folder, gets picked up, you can install it. Um, provisioning, well, the provisioning, it's all about features and, I, and I'll be talking about features uh, quite a bit because now OpenAI will be a lot feature oriented. And then finally, uh, a couple of administrative functions. So some of the security stuff uh, is also available as part of the, uh, of the container. It allows you to have some access control that's either on the shell commands or on the, the console or the JMX console that you would attach to debug or do stuff. So um, that JMX stuff uh, will be, might not make it into Helium as a side step because there was some technical uh, incompatibilities, but it is going to be there uh, right afterwards. And then you have also the, the blueprints, so the XML, Spring, VM-ish way of wiring, wiring things. Um, so Caraf, when I mention features, what, what's actually a feature? And that's a bit of what brought like some of the people uh, in OpenDaylight to look at that is it allows you to group the bundles into logical subcomponents or into logical units. Maybe not components, but at least logical units. So it makes it easier to know the whole hierarchy of dependencies that is involved within uh, OpenDaylight itself, right? So moreover, you can actually version that uh, as you go. So if someone else is actually dependent on you, well, they can have a different versioning cycle. They can actually uh, manage it very differently. So, Helium Revisited. How are we going to consume or provide Helium, hopefully? Um, it's uh, the ice cream bar. So it is going to be a choose whatever you want buffet type of situation where you'll be able to choose the components you want to put. And these components, you can actually do different things with them. You can either create your own distribution, um, you can actually turn them on or off, uh, uh, maybe not at runtime, but you might need to restart eventually at runtime. And uh, so the ability is to actually get rid of the notion of additions for Alien. Right? Yes? So I'm confused by this concept. Is is Open Daylight going to be testing these combinations of modules as part of their release criteria? Yeah. Okay, all right, so. Yes, so we, that, that's the, the testing we've been, uh, we've been actually putting together is that we test uh, the, the, the different combinations of modules. There are some that are incompatible with each other because they are doing exactly the same thing. And in other cases, it's because they're owning the world, right? So that's also why I'm saying that the features themselves or the notion of an installable unit is not enough for OpenDaylight. Okay. So you need to have a notion of a component, have a proper life cycle for that and so on. But that's gonna come in Lithium. So we're taking baby steps uh, in Helium and at least providing proper units so that are installable and testable. And then from there, we will revisit the life cycle and see how we can actually make that even better. For, uh, from a lithium point of view. But good question. It, it is actually uh, uh, something we've also been concerned about. Any other questions so far? No. So it is an ongoing effort. <laughs> That's two days ago. So. Uh, no, that was last <laughs> yesterday. night. Yesterday. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it seems like two days so, ago. It seems like two days ago because I haven't slept much. But. Um, <laughs> We are still working on it. We are, what, four weeks from the release, is it? Or five weeks? About five. five. Five weeks from the release. So, 
Everything is coming together, but we are in a heavy integration and rush mode at the moment. So that's why you'll see my demo work the hands on. I'll show you the concept. We'll see how far we get, but it's always a challenge. Um, and but for the release, the good news is it's all going to work well because right now each of the components have been testing tested more, more or less separately. So we're going through the final phase of pulling the whole stuff together, uh, and that's the, the, the project hurting <laughs> type, of, uh, type of work. And thanks to George here, which is helping quite a bit uh, on this. Um, so it is work in progress. Uh, it is something that we are looking into, and it doesn't preclude preparing distributions or preparing other custom things. So you could roll up your own, or, or it's very, just makes it very easy to, to create something and assemble whatever you want, right? Um, so it, it's not precluding the notion of additions, but at least now you know what you're putting in. Uh, and whether that's done through a download link, a download page, uh, or at runtime through a graphical user interface or, or command line, it's all up to you guys. And that's also why I'm trying to get the, I hope to get the bit of the feel of the crowd here just as a sampling to see how you guys would like to consume some of that. So um, I'll jump in into some of that hands-on session so that you'll be uh, a little more familiar with what I am just talking about. Is there any questions before I actually dig into the, uh, the, the hands-on portion of this? Just go quickly into what we'll be doing quick. So, um, the first thing that we're working with is, is to have an image. So, have the distribution image. It will be downloadable. There is a link that will be sent to you so that you can actually go download it and, and run this. Um, there's also uh, uh, new Java and ideally Vagrant if you want to get to test the open flow um, stuff. So, the first thing is really to unzip the distribution, then we'll, we'll run the, the container and just, we'll get to see how the container behaves, um, the shells, then we'll install the uh, uh, feature as an example and, and a couple of features um, and we will access the APIs that are brought by uh, installing that feature. What's coming? I, I'm just giving you a small sneak peek of what's more in the uh, pending patches. Um, so the, what's in the pending patches is the ability to install all that from a, a user interface. So you won't have to do the, the CLI way of managing it. So whenever you get the first base zip container, well, you'll have a little nice wizard that's going to guide you through your initial what you want to do with this um, setup. And from there, you can always go and change the features or change the the values or anything you want um, as within the, the feature pages. 
So that's all done. It's just not all merged. Um, and another thing, uh, and, and that I can actually show live, possibly, but, um, well, yeah. So that's something we are working on, and that will also be available to really, uh, at release, and you'll find very, very interesting and important if you are working with this edition, is the ability to do uh, and to go into a Project Explorer above you. Okay, the plot Project Explorer uh, actually creates a map of all the features that we have within OpenDLI that are provided by any project, and what are the dependencies between all these features. Uh, so that is uh, very nice. However, you'll see that there's also this little tab here, which is it's not there yet, but um, <laughs> I'm working on higher level uh, constructs. So I, uh, you want to admit, yes, features are nice, but you see they're very low level, low granularity. It's not how you would consume it as an end user or as someone that's interested. It's very useful from a developer's point of view because um, you can bring in only the pieces and components you're actually using. But when you're user facing, that granularity is, is very low. And yes, you can do meta features and higher level features, but just having a small description like that is it, not enough, right? So we want to tie that into the, with documentation, with the actual um, test coverage and, and other metrics so that you know exactly that if you're bringing in that component or that piece within uh, OpenAI, then you know what to expect. You are, is it experimental? Is it good? How, you know, like not really branding, but actually letting the user know uh, because uh, there are implications to the components and not everything in OpenAI has the same maturity. Uh, you guys are familiar with open source project. I think it's the same pretty much everywhere. So, um, yeah, so so basically that's uh, what's coming and I'll just dig into the, the hands-on piece now. All right, so in order to actually go ahead and, um, and make this happen, what you wanna do is you'll wanna have an open daylight distribution. Uh, that open daily distribution is that download link and uh, will be available. I'll start with the controller one. The controller one is basically the distribution that is attached to the controller project. It is limited in scope as in it doesn't really have all the uh, other components that you would want in uh, as part of an integration. It is simply just the basic controller level features. Uh, so you don't get OpenFlow plugin or you don't, it's just uh, the plumbing, right? So when you're actually working within this, you're actually working with the pl plumbing pieces. Um, you don't have like any real functionality. Then if we're lucky, we'll go into integration where we do have an OpenFlow plugin integrated uh, within the distro and we'll see how that reacts uh, when we actually load up a mini-net with uh, an overflow uh, um, uh, runtime. And finally, I'll also explain a bit how you actually develop uh, in this environment, because how do you actually log, how do you attach a debugger, how do you list the bundles? So that's the last part of what I'm gonna show you. Right, any questions so far? Feel free to stop me at any time. I, you guys have been awfully quiet. Well, either you're bored to that or, uh, <laughs> yes. Is there any discussion, and I know this is probably really a touchy thing, um, you talked about the maturity of each component. Mm -hmm. um, if the developers of that component had wanted a way to basically signal that it was sort of not mature yet, but go ahead and try it, mm -hmm. is there any way in the panel that it could be displayed? Yeah, uh, I've added that extension to the uh, XML description of the components. Uh, so I will display it in, as part of the Explorer and also in the GUI. So I, I think it's very important from a user perspective, uh, and we only care about the users mainly. Uh, so uh, they need to know what to expect whenever they, they install the feature. So no, that's 
that will definitely be, uh, be there for the weeks. Um, right, so basically, um, if you've built or if you've downloaded uh, the distribution is you'll get either a tar or a zip. Uh, personally, the way we package Adenosat, the, the distro, uh, we use uh, um, uh, CoreOS based, uh, I mean, it's very close to a CoreOS port, uh, but, and, and we actually use Docker uh, on top of that. So that's, that's the way we package it uh, for, for specific reasons, but we find that uh, it's downloadable zip it's also a very, very good, um, uh, a very good way. We do it only because of the updates. So, all right. So let's first start the container. You guys see the lines, or it's too small, or? So when you get started, when the first thing you get is uh, you'll get the shell, right? So there, there's two things you can actually do. You can either, uh, uh, in the base distribution, you'll have the GUI also automatically loaded. Um, it could be turned off through configuration for those of you that bring this into another system and don't care much about the user interface. But uh, um, other, otherwise, uh, the default will get to, to, to be a, to have a small minimalist uh, you. So what you can then do is you can uh, go and list all the, the features that are available within the container. So if, just in order to list the current features of Open Daylight, um, and, and don't be scared, So um, we have about, uh, without the projects, that's only the controller features. So the controller features are about 40-ish uh, features. Um, and then you'd have about this 25 or 27 of them um, uh, for the projects. So that's the, the current uh, quantity of code that you'll find in Open Daylight. Open Daylight is actually pretty big for its age. Um, how many million lines of code? I think it's what, 1.5-ish? Ish, yes. Ish. So, uh, <laughs> so these features are sort of the granular, granular level that you can start building from? Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and these can either be started at, at uh, at start time or integrated into higher level features. So as part of that, there are also higher level component features uh, that allows you to basically bring in a lot of stuff with a single uh, command or get a user interface, right? So we don't expect people to understand all that, but it's important for the people, and, and this is a more developer-oriented talk, and that's why I'm trying to explain uh, the logic behind uh, the smaller features. So if I, for example, want to bring in the, the system that configures uh, everything, then you, you can always do something like ODL config all, and that's going to bring in the, uh, uh, the config subsystem. So then if I just feature list uh, and grab on ODL config, then I see that all of them are, are now installed as part of their state, right? So that's, um, uh, that's the way you would actually bring in things. So let's just, as an example, um, in Open Daylight, if you look at, I, I wonder if, I'm pretty sure it might not be on your diagram, but um, yeah, so, in Open Daylight, there is that notion of SAL or service abstraction layer. And um, as part of the Open Daylight history, there's been two versions of the SAL. There was the AD SAL, uh, which was API driven, uh, and then there is the MD SAL. 
which was a model driven abstraction. Um, these two styles are kind of two different stacks uh, that exist within Open Daylight. While we're trying to reunite some of that, uh, it is still the fact that you still have a lot of dependencies. And the, the community so far um, has been converging on, on some of these um, specific uh, uh, stacks. So I'll, I'll just bring in the, the toaster example, which toaster is an example of the plumbing, right? It is not an example of any useful feature. It simply um, allows you to, to see how the, the model the plumbing works. Um, so let me just, so now we actually got the toaster, oops, just, well, we'll just verify, but, right, so toaster is in, everything's running. Now in order to actually do something with it from a REST uh, point of view, Let's just uh, install RESTConf. Okay. So RESTConf is a REST API on top of, uh, of Open Daylight. It has become uh, a, the, the central way of, of accessing the submodels. There are other northbounds, but RESTConf is definitely the one that's being maintained the most and that's being used uh, a lot by the, the newer uh, user interface. So what, it's, what type of applications would call RESTCOM? Um, basically any types of apps. I, I'll give you a, whenever I, I'm working with, uh, with customers or, or people, what I'm doing is it's really to gauge where do they need to put their application. Do they need to do it within Open Daylight or do they need to put it on top of? And that really depends on, on how fast you need to do things or how you need to do things. So how do you want to react and how will you do things with the model? Are you simply, for example, changing flow rules or applying policy or do you need to be reactive to a point where you need to live, you know, coexist within the actual controller runtime, right? So that's always the, um, the analysis that you need to do and, and there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see that happening um, in the future. Right? And one other thing I've been fairly um, interested in is also providing that application, uh, I'm giving scoops, but it's also providing that application runtime within the controller in a controlled fashion. So right now, if you look at the way the applications exist, is most of them own the controller, right? And that is a huge issue. It's good for like use case apps, right? When you have a single app that's doing something, that, as I mentioned earlier, like network virtualization. But in other cases, when it's when you want applications to coexist, um, it is not as obvious because they can step on each other's toes, right? They can they can add policies or add flow rules that, if we're talking open flow, for example, uh, they can add policies or flow rules that conflicts and there's absolutely nothing at the moment that's preventing that from happening. Uh, so that's something that we need to address as a community and, and there are plans to do so. Um, right, so we got uh, RESTCONF in. So we just have a, hopefully, I'm, sorry for And that and see. Okay. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that. So <laughs> basically, um, uh, we got the toaster, uh, the toaster stuff in, and it actually allows you to. Um, uh, to see the, the toaster state. So uh, through the RESTConf interface, toaster has a little bit of, uh, it, like it's, it's an example provider of state uh, that has a status and model number and stuff like that. So it's it's really uh, uh, just a sample on, on what the model would be. 
I'll now try to get into the open flow example with the exact same thing. So that basically is the, the whole open daylight plumbing. You'll tell me, okay, well, we brought in what, uh, maybe 60 to 70 bundles and there's no real functionality. Um, and I, I would agree with you um, because the functionality here is just to make sure that we can do model augmentation. It's just the ability to route the messages properly uh, within the actual components so that you can support these abstractions, that you can have a flow abstraction that, that goes netconf, that goes open flow, that goes whatever, which is the main difference between open daylight and some other control projects out there. It's really that fact that we acknowledge that there is an hybrid world out there and there's not a single way, I mean a single protocol to, to rule them all. Um, and while I am also a big, uh, we're all SBN related here, so I am also a big open flow fan for some use cases. Uh, and, and it is, uh, but it is just a one way of doing SDN, and I'm sure there will be more coming, uh, especially with some of the data playing that's being uh, done. So, um, just, it's important to keep the options open, especially at the control level, and to know exactly what. Uh, what to expect, that, right? So now that we actually got this up, um, I'll go into the integration one. We'll see if we can get a topology going, and we also will uh, cover a bit of the bundles. In the meantime, while this is actually uh, barking, is, is do you guys have any questions? Any kind? Any ideas on how you would like to consume Open Daylight? Any thoughts? No? All right. So, as long as you get a good GUI and, and, and the ability to turn things on or off, is that okay with you? Yeah? I'm sorry? From open stack integration. I'm sorry? From open stack integration. Yeah. Yeah, neutral and stuff. So the API is a bit weak. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of, exactly. And, well, that's, okay. From an OpenStack uh, integration point of view, there is uh, the Neutron side of things and there's the underlay side of things, right? So the underlay uh, side of things uh, will likely, and, and I'm talking, yeah, yeah that, that's the vision of some people in, in, in the ecosystem, but the idea is really to have the underlay managed um, a little more by open daylight, uh, and while there are like there's Tusker and there's Triple O, and, and uh, there's still an ironic um, the relationship between this and the bootstrapping process is e easier done uh, via open daylight. So that's something that some of the OBSDB guys are, are, are looking into, um, and of course, OBSDB is, is really the main way to integrate with, well, not the main way, but it's one of the good ways to uh, integrate with uh, with neutrons. Neutron, sorry. There's a couple of other alternatives, but um, OBSDB is definitely an interesting one, uh, an in interesting approach. Uh, yes? I have one question about Brad. Sure. Um, is OSGI still accessible when you're using Brad? Can you go below? Yep. Yeah, and it's uh, it's definitely not a dumb question. In fact, Karaf is a set of syntactic sugar around your whole uh, OSGI environment. So it allows you to see what's happening, debug things, and, and make things a little easier uh, as a user. But if you need it to get down below it, you can. Oh, yeah, you can always access. Um, and I'll show you a bit how you manage the bundles, and the, the, that's the next piece, um, if I can. How much time do I have? About eight minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe not. Maybe not. So um, instead of, of going in this row, I will explain a bit uh, about what I just mentioned. Um, otherwise, uh, just bringing up the mini net stuff is probably going to take my eight minutes. So I uh, will just. Um, Give me a second, guys. Okay. All right. Of 
course, you will never have to live that nightmare if you're actually using it. Um, but if you are developing against it, you'll find that it's a lot easier than it was um, if you've ever tried to do things in the current open daylight environment. So to get to the point of working with OSGI, uh, there, what's very nice, and, and you'll see that if you download the slides, is you have a bunch of very nice uh, commands to work with your bundles. So it starts with bundle list, which will list all your bundles given a specific threshold. So if I don't want to see all the system level bundles, then I can just uh, uh, threshold at a specific level and say everything that is open delight, which is after 35, I want to see it. And I don't want to see all the system ones and so on. So that's a very nice feature. And you can go and uh, everything above 100 is actually your own bundles. So it's something that you would actually create and you don't want to see the list of all the open daylight underlying bundles. You simply want to see yours, then you can actually work uh, by using everything above threshold 100. Um, so there is that notion of, of bundles and, and there, uh, I'll just give you a small example. Um, what's very uh, interesting as well is the tree show. So, what you can, if you're not too sure of what the dependencies are from, from a bundle perspective, is you can actually do tree show with uh, the bundle number and it's gonna give you the whole dependency tree for that bundle. Very, very useful functionality to work with. Uh, another cool thing is if you are using Maven, and you will likely be if you're using, uh, if you're developing with Open Daylight, um, is you can do a bundle watch. A bundle watch is, um, is a function that will watch a specific URL or ID of a bundle, and whenever you Maven compile and Maven install it and it changes in the repository, it's going to reload automatically there. So that makes the development cycle very quick, uh, so that whenever it's built, it's already reloaded, ready to test, ready to run. Um, there's also the uh, uh, the find class method, which is uh, pretty. Uh, pretty good, which allows you to uh, find a specific class. I'm trying to find one off the top of my head, but um, yeah, well, that's not gonna find it's just the package. But um, so if you would, uh, like that, yeah, that should. So find class uh, actually search the bundles. So it actually search the bundles so that you will try to list the bundle that is providing that class. It's very useful to find uh, when you're actually looking uh, for specific environments. Um, there's also feature info that allows you to, uh, uh, sorry, bundle info. Which allows you to get additional information like description when it's provided, and there's bundle headers, which will give you all the manifest information. So you can really debug your OSGI environment properly with graph, whereas if you have the, the, the normal Equinox shell and so on, it's very limited in the actual things that you can do at the, at the bundle level. Um, there's also the bundle diag function when things go wrong, uh, it's going to list exactly why it didn't start and, and why it doesn't work and so on. So that's very useful from a development perspective. Um, there's also the, all the feature, sorry, all the feature commands, uh, which are very important. So what you can do is add or remove repositories. Uh, so to, in order to add stuff to Open Daylight, you would create your own features with the feature repository, then you would do repo add to that repository or you would do your own distro and from there you can feature install everything that you've described in that environment so you can bring in your own features bring in your own ways of doing things um, within the open daylight environment and uh, there's also the log which is very very neat uh, it allows you to first of all not have all a bunch of trash on the shell, sorry for the <laughs> terminology, but you don't get a lot of garbage on the shell. Um, and it also is very easy to work with. So you can basically 
um, uh, log, you can even log your own uh, uh, messages like type of situation and um, you can set uh, oh. that's weird. sorry um, and you can actually set your log level to any log level you want uh, through the shell or through the configuration so if you're debugging something you're trying to find out more about it you can set debug only for a specific uh, sub logger or any class or whatever and you don't have to go into all the, the log back XML changes and so on. So you can do everything from the, the command line here uh, and, and that's pretty neat. Um, I think I, I might have a last sub item and uh, yeah. So uh, the last things is there and, and there wasn't the old open the live but there's still a, an SSH uh, Demon, so you can SSH into that, uh, or you can turn it off if you're uh, security uh, concerned about it. But it, it is uh, part of the initial uh, distro, uh, and can easily attach a remote debugger to that. So, so that's really uh, a quick overview of what to expect in Helium. Uh, and uh, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to share your thoughts and, and everything with me. If you also uh, want, just uh, we'll send out the download links with the full image that you can actually give it a spin, uh, give it a try, uh, and that full image will have the GUI as well. So feel free to comment on that as well. All right. Thank you a lot for attending the, the talk. I hope you've enjoyed that sneak peek. But more is more will come when we actually release the thing in September.